Hello everyone, welcome to another Jelly Print With Me video tutorial. These are my favorite kind of videos because I can press play and basically do what I love to do best. I'll be using my round gel press jelly plate. As you can see here, it's about eight inches across. And I'm gonna be using a combination of paints. I'm gonna be using my Liquitex soft body acrylics and my golden open acrylic in titanium white. And then to create textures, I'm actually going to be using some soft pastels to create some floating chalk print style um, textures on my jelly plate. Before this final draft of a video, I actually started playing around with some of the effects that I could create with the pastels and I realized that using the Liquitex soft body acrylics was not really the best choice only because they dry so quickly. If you wanted to do a process like this with me, I suggest you use the Golden Open Acrylics or another very slow drying acrylic paint because if you're using a, an acrylic paint that already dries very fast, what's going to happen is that the chalk pastel is basically just going to go and make it dry even faster and it's going to make it harder for you to pull a lot of prints from the paint that you already have on the plate. If you look very faintly, you can see that in addition to the blue and the white that I mixed in with that titanium white, you can see some of the speckles of the pastel that I was scraping onto the surface of the gel plate. What I wanted to do here was basically a merging of two different types of DIY printmaking. I wanted to use jelly printing, which of course I love, and I wanted to use the process of making a floating chalk print. A floating chalk print is really fun and really easy to make. You basically fill a tray with water and then you take some soft pastels like the ones I'm using here and scrape the pigment onto the floating water. And then once you have enough pigment, you take a sheet of paper, you dip it into the surface of the water and pull a beautiful print and then get astounded by the results of it. So I wanted to go and basically merge those two printmaking styles. I wanted to capture a, the, the sporadic feeling of the chalk print onto the jelly plate. While I am happy with some of the results that I got, I definitely think I could have done better if I had used all slow drying paints like the Golden Open Acrylics. I think using the soft body acrylic paints that I was using by Liquitex, as much as I love them, just was not a good idea for this particular printmaking challenge. So what I'm doing here is basically making a lot of different backgrounds using the exact same process whereby I put down acrylic paint onto the printing plate. Ooh, that one is beautiful. <laughs> Look at that, it looks like, I don't know, the earth seen from the, from the atmosphere or something, or from outer space rather. Well anyway, so the process is pretty simple to create these backgrounds. I'm just putting down a lot of paint and taking the soft pastel and using that ball mason jar lid to go and scrape the pigment onto the wet paint and then very fast, basically just going and smoothing over with my hand um, onto the paper so that I can try to capture that texture onto the paper. And I'm just using some basic Bristol paper. I like using Bristol paper because it's nice and smooth and hard enough that it won't buckle when it starts getting wet with all of that paint.
Once I had filled several different pieces of Bristol paper with those colorful backgrounds, I decided it was time to start doing some cool layering effects. So I started using some DIY masks that I created using the transparency sheets that typically you would use with um, an overhead projector. What I did is I basically cut a design into the sheet and used an X-Acto knife and a pair of scissors to cut pieces out of the design so that I could go and put it over my gel plate and achieve some really interesting layering effects. There's a really wonderful tutorial on how to create these DIY masks on the Jelly Arts YouTube channel and I'll link it in the description box below. Obviously I did not create that video, but it is a really great video that shows you step by step how to create those style masks. I was actually using um, an ampersand object that I bought from Home Goods. It's actually a decorative object to go and to trace onto the overhead sheet and basically go and cut out those beautiful designs that are seen in the video. I really love the different curves of the ampersand and the fact that it looks so abstract when I went and I laid it over my gel plate. I had to work really fast to pull a ghost print onto this other sheet of paper because as I mentioned previously, the chalk definitely makes the actual um, paint dry very very fast much faster than it typically does So if you're trying to do this at home, I suggest you work pretty fast I suggest you basically have the sheets of paper next to you so that it's easy for you to keep pulling as many prints as possible and To not let that paint go to waste and harden on your gel plates so that you can pull as many ghost prints as possible as I said in a previous video the ghost prints are usually my favorite because they're just so unexpected and they capture so many different details that aren't necessarily as obvious with the initial print that we make with the gel plate. Do not be afraid to layer different masks in the same exact gel plates if you want to produce some really interesting layering effects and make your work look a little bit more abstract. Here you can see I basically made two different DIY masks in the same method um, and just laid them over my round jelly plates so that I could create a far more abstract result. The really great thing about these DIY masks is that you can use them pretty much as often as you want to. Because they're plastic, they're made out of the overhead sheets that you would use for like an overhead projector. Um, they're not actually going to go and stick to the plate, they're not going to stick to the piece of paper, and the paint will not um, damage the actual sheet in any way. 
so you can just let them dry for a few minutes if you're using acrylic paint and keep reusing them as often as you want to. So I'm 100% I'm in love with this ampersand style mask that I created with that same method using the overhead projector sheet and I can't wait to keep using it in future projects. Let me just take a moment to appreciate that beautiful coppery color of acrylic paint that I was using. I know it's a little bit difficult to see because it was still clear, but I was using a mask that is basically in the profile of a Labrador dog. And again, this was a mask that I created by basically tracing a decorative object that I actually have hanging from my wall and cutting it out so that I could have that really beautiful dog profile that I'm about to go and mask into one of my jelly prints.
That is a gorgeous print using a mask that I cut into the shape of a baby, as you can clearly see here. That was actually taken from a magazine image and I just cut it out in that shape. I can't wait to try the same exact technique again where I merge my love for floating chalk prints with my love for jelly printing. In future, when I try it again, I'll be using slow drying paints so that I don't run into the issue of the paint drying too fast on my jelly plate. But I think I've achieved some really beautiful textures and really interesting colorful results and I am very excited to add these prints to my collection. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!